Yes, the mayor and I were talking about the collaboration between uh, the Netherlands and the city of New Orleans after Katrina. Uh, the mayor was talking a little bit about the experience they had in 1953 and how that country had to adapt in order to survive with so much water around them. When, when Katrina swamped the city of New Orleans, we didn't know where else to look. And we went to look at the country that really was the most progressive in the world about how to live with water. And we had a discussion about that and how we learned from each other, uh, and us particularly learning from them after such an incredible catastrophe. So we delivered from the Netherlands a lot of technical support and knowledge, and also our people have been visiting uh, his, uh, his city, but he is moving quick. Um, the, the way uh, the city is developing the former port areas, for instance, and um, uh, making them accessible for the uh, other part of the economy, new economy, is really something we can learn from, from it. And that's, to me, a very new, uh, a new, a new idea. Um. I'll just say, you know, one of the things that happens when, when mayors get together is we share thoughts and ideas. As I was listening to the mayors earlier talk about ways that they are reducing, you know, greenhouse emissions um, and the way that the, just the kind of transit systems that are being put in place, the LED systems that are put in place, how we actually pick up trash. Cities, we share all of those very basic delivery of services in common. Um, and consequently, when, when somebody comes up with an idea that really works, it's easily transferable and it's easily scalable over time. From their perspective, some of the best engineering in the world is done in the Netherlands. And we went there. We talked to, to them about uh, doing massive projects in New Orleans that we'll spend $14.6 billion on in terms of how to rebuild the levee system. But we didn't just put it back the way it was. We really went and learned from them about how they did it. And then they said to us, in just a very simple way, but you don't always want to live against the water. You want to live with the water because water, as you know, can be life-giving and it can be life-taking if you don't manage it well. And you're not, going to, you're not going to control it. It's generally going to control you. Uh, and so you have to be ready to adapt to either sea level rise or, in our case, a combination of sea level rise and the, and the eradication of uh, our coastline. And we have to be prepared because more storms are going to come. They're going to be bigger. We have to be prepared for them. We have to be able to uh, make ourselves stronger to receive the power that they bring. And then we have to be able to organize ourselves so we can get back into uh, you know, regular living once the water goes out again. Mother Nate is always stronger than any human activities, any human plan. We do our best. Uh, we uh, have budgets, we have people, we have instruments. But nevertheless, if in my city a dike breaks, uh, a big part of the city will disappear. Not only the city, but a big part of the country will move to the east, um, maybe 100 kilometers. And I think that is the thing we have, we have to think about it. What we are really talking about a big vulnerability. My city is 600,000 people. But Ho Chi Minh City is a couple of millions, and Shanghai is a couple of millions, and Jakarta is 24 million people. So um, if something happens in our big cities, really, the number of casualties will, will be tremendous. And I think that's why uh, it's really important that our leaders try to understand that they have to move more from ideological angle of looking to the issue to more practical measures to protect our environments. Well, we call it, we call it a, a risk reduction strategy, as the mayor said, and he's completely right. You can't guarantee and you wouldn't want to guarantee that people are going to be safe because bad things are going to happen. But you can reduce the risk by being prepared. You can reduce the risk by having a plan. You can reduce the risk by when you build back, building in a strong way and building in a smart way. And then when the bad things happen, you're much more ready to adapt to what it's going to bring for you. That really is the, is the more practical strategy that I think makes sense. So you just have to be ready and you have to be as strong as technology allows you to be. And learning from each other is one way to do that.